When I shot the brew pub series of videos, there's a scene that was captured live where I was copying files from the OWC CF Express card using the Express Card Reader to the external OWC drive, and I was genuinely blown away at how fast it was. That was a real reaction. It was the first time I'd copied files like that and the speeds were insane. Well, as I was falling asleep last night, I remembered that I needed to ship some of this stuff back to OWC and I thought that I should do some more measured comparisons to see how different the speeds really are while I still have the gear. The note that I left myself as I was falling asleep said to compare copying internal to internal, meaning the internal SD card reader to the internal SSD drive, versus internal to external, so to the external 1M2 drive, and then external to external, so using the OWC card readers. Then as I sat down to do a quick video this morning, I realized that there was a lot more permutations to compare, including copying from SD cards, CF Express cards, and of course, I should compare using SSD drives, since on many cameras, like the GH7, you can now capture directly to SSD. And by the way, while OWC did sponsor that video in the past, this one isn't explicitly sponsored, but I wanted to run these tests to see these numbers for myself, and I figured that if I was interested, that you might be too. So here's the tests that I'm about to run, and all the pieces and all of their claimed speeds. I put the same mix of various resolution and bitrate video files plus RAW and JPEG photos to all the media, so we'd have an exact comparison for the tests. The SD cards are the OWC Atlas Ultra 256 gigabyte cards, which claims a read speed of 300 megabytes per second and a write speed of 250 megabytes per second. The CF Express card is the OWC CF Express 4.0 Type B Atlas Ultra 2 terabyte cards, which claims a read speed of 3,650 megabytes per second and a write speed of 3,000 megabytes per second. So, you know, it's just a little bit faster. The SSD for camera capture is the OWC Envoy Pro Electron, a USB 3.2, that's 10 gigabit per second, which is 1250 megabytes per second SSD drive. Now that performance number is the USB interface itself, not necessarily the media inside of it. So we'll see when we copy files. So that's where we're copying from. The readers we'll use to copy are, first, the Max internal SD card reader. This is a 16-inch M2 Max MacBook Pro running macOS Sonoma 14.6.1. The Apple System Information Report shows that this internal reader has a link speed of a single lane 5.0 GT per second, which I had to look up and surprisingly doesn't mean gin and tonics per second, but means giga transfer per second, which converts to 500 megabyte per second or four gigabit per second. Then we have the OWC Atlas Dual SD Reader, which is a dual SD card reader with a USB 3.2 interface, accurately reported by Apple system information that it's a 10 gigabit per second interface with dual five gigabit per second readers. So that means you should get maximum copy performance from each card slot, regardless if you're copying from one card or two simultaneously. This is a really neat card reader, by the way, with a built-in short cable for travel, which you can then tuck away and it has a port on the back to plug into a longer cable if it's more convenient, like when you're at your desk. Then for the CF Express cards, we of course have to use an external reader since the computer doesn't have a CF Express card reader built in. And this is the OWC Atlas CFX 4.0 reader. This is a 40 gigabit per second reader, which by the way, you do have to use a 40 gigabit per second cable to take advantage of. It of course comes with its own cable, but I'm using these Condor Blue 40 gigabit cables because, well, Condor Blue. And finally, we're copying to the Mac's internal SSD, which the Apple System Information Report doesn't actually say anything about the interface performance, but we'll test with the Blackmagic Disk Speed Test, and then to the OWC Express 1M2 drive, which I have the two terabyte version of here. Like the CF Express Reader, this is a 40 gigabit per second interface, again, with a Condor Blue 40 gigabit per second cable. But again, yes, of course, this drive comes with its own cable as well. So that's the setup. Let's start by benchmarking the two destination drives. First up is the internal SSD. The tests varied dramatically, so I let speed test run five times and average them. You can see the write tests hitting as low as 2721 megabytes per second and as high as 6436 megabytes per second. I feel like with the repeated tests, it's cached the data. I don't know exactly how the BMD speed test works, so we may be seeing artificially higher numbers, but the average write speed 
came in at about 5348 megabytes per second. Then for the read test, it was much more consistent with an average of 5206 megabytes per second. For the OWC Express 1M2 drive, the results are lower, but also far more consistent and still blindingly fast. The average across three tests were 3146 megabytes per second write and 2885 megabytes per second read. Keep in mind, these numbers may not convert when we actually start copying real data, so don't even begin to think that you've got any kind of an answer here yet. I also benchmarked the little Envoy Pro Electron Drive, and it reported very consistent numbers with averages of 965 megabytes per second write and 807 megabyte per second read. Here's an interesting comparison as well. I've converted all these numbers to gigabit per second, so we have consistency to compare the actual results to the interface specs, meaning the maximum possible theoretical performance. Remember that in any drive test, there are two components of the drive. There's the interface, in this case, USB 4 and USB 3.2 and something else for the internal SSD. And then there's the actual media inside. Since we don't have interface numbers for the internal drive, we can't compare that. But the 1M2 40 gigabit per second interface is getting 25 and 23 gigabit per second performance while the Envoy Pro with a 10 gigabit per second interface is getting 7.7 .7 and 6.5 gigabit per second performance. Whatever the Mac is using internally, it's clearly not limited to 40 gigabit per second since we got nearly 43 and 42 gigabit per second speeds there. All right, our baselines are set. Let's get some copying done. I'm using an app called Offshoot by Hedge to do the file copies. One reason is it'll report the exact transfer times in the log so I don't have to sit here with the stopwatch. But more importantly, Offshoot is much more than a finder copy. It does checksums, can copy to multiple destinations at once, can rename files on import, and a bunch more. I use this for all of my media copies. They aren't sponsors, and I bought the license myself. I just really recommend using this software for camera card copies instead of just using the Finder or Explorer. And yes, this software is on macOS and on Windows, and even on the iPad. I'll put a link to them down below. I highly recommend you check them out. All right, obviously you don't wanna watch a series of tests, so here's a little file copy montage. The data being copied is about 227 gigabytes, and again, is a mix of various video and still photo files. Starting with internal to internal on this very fast SD card, okay, maybe not fast compared to what else we're looking at today, but as far as SD cards go, the Atlas Ultras are super fast. Copy time for 227 gigabytes from the internal SD card reader to the internal SSD was 14 minutes and 51 seconds at a data rate of a quarter of a gigabyte per second or almost 255 megabytes per second or about two gigabits per second. So that's our baseline. Remember those cards advertise a 300 megabyte per second read speed. So 255 megabytes per second sustained is great. Copying from the internal reader to the OWC Express 1M2 SSD drive, the copy time is virtually identical. As expected, since certainly the slowest part of this chain is the SD card itself, and before we move on, let me point out that this is very fast for an SD card. These are essentially the fastest SD cards on the market today. Most SD cards are considerably slower, advertising peak 200 megabyte per second read speeds, which means sustained would be well below that. It wouldn't be uncommon to see a 30 minute or more copy time for this much data from lesser cards. Testing the OWC dual SD card reader to both the internal and external drives are only a little bit faster than using the internal card reader, closer to 14 minutes and around 270 megabytes per second. So at first glance, it hardly seems worth the expense and hassle of using an external reader until you remember that these cards have dual slots. Copying two cards simultaneously copied 427 gigabytes in 15 minutes and 41 seconds. That's a combined transfer rate of 450 megabytes per second or 3.6 gigabits. So that's a significant improvement if you regularly shoot to more than one card. You are essentially cutting your copy time in half, not to mention that you don't have to take the time to remove one card, insert another, and start a new copy. Now let's look at the CF Express Type B cards. Let me prepare you. It's ridiculous. The performance is stunning. Once you experience a speed like this, everything else is downright molasses in winter. For my non-native English speaking friends, that means everything else seems slow. Really, really slow. Copy times from the CF Express card to the internal drive and the external drive are once again nearly identical and instead of taking 15 minutes, are done in under a minute and 40 seconds. 2.3 gigabytes per second. Gigabytes. Gigabytes! 
2300 megabytes per second, over 18 gigabits per second. It is nine times faster. I'll let that sink in for just a moment. So CF Express is super fast, but the cards aren't cheap. And of course, not that many cameras even support them. But there is something in between. Capturing to SSD drive on the camera instead of to SD or CF Express cards inside the camera. This Envoy Pro Electron works perfectly with the Lumix GH7 and costs just $300 for two terabytes, while the CF Express card costs $680 for two terabytes. The Electron is less than half the price of CF Express, but how does that compare to the cost of SD cards? Well, these fast SD cards, first of all, max out at 512 megabytes, and that costs $500. So you're looking at $2,000 for two terabytes of fast SD cards. That makes the CF Express cards a veritable bargain by comparison, and a lot faster if your camera supports them. But we're talking about the SSD drive now at a cost of just 15% of the SD cards. Again, $300 for two terabytes versus $2,000. So what's the SSD performance? Well, copying from the Envoy Pro Electron to either the internal or external SSD took just five minutes at about 750 megabytes per second or six gigabits per second. Still three times as fast as SD cards. And of course, this is two terabytes on a single drive instead of four or eight or more SD cards. So if your camera supports SSD, you can gain significant capacity, triple the performance, or more if you're coming from lesser cards, and save considerable money. Finally, I want to circle back to this drive, the 1M2. In all tests, it performed essentially the same as the internal drive. So what was the point of including it in these tests? Well, the point was to show that an external drive can be nearly or just as fast as the internal drives on these machines. We all know how incredibly fast the internal SSDs are on modern computers like this MacBook Pro. Basically, any standard external drive you buy is going to be an order of magnitude slower than the internal drive. But you can now buy an external SSD that is, for most use cases, just as fast as the internal drive. Okay, there's my roundup. By all means, run these tests yourself. Put any amount of media on your cards and copy them to your drives and do the math to see what you get. Let me know in the comments if you run some tests what your results are. And if your numbers make you sad, check out OWC. I have affiliate links to all this stuff in the description below. So if you decide to buy based on these results, I certainly appreciate you using my links. Double check to make sure that you're subscribed and I'll see you in the next video.